Praise the Lord. God bless you, Victory Hours Denver. We're coming to you tonight, just live stream, and the reason why is because we have a lot of things going on at the church, construction. We're getting ready for our incredible weekend uh, this weekend, amen, and we'll hear more about that later on. But now it's time to worship the Lord. It's time right there in your house to begin to worship God. And, you know, Wednesday night is something that's separated. We separated the time to be able, this is God's time. And so we're going to come together and we're going to worship the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, bless our worship, God, as we all come together, God, and worship, Lord God. I pray the anointing would flow, God, from the, from the uh, screen, God, into the homes, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands tonight, church. Can somebody give the Lord a shout of praise in this place? Come on, shout hallelujah. Hey. hey. We praise you, Lord. When you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the music playing, and you see the people praising, just forget about your worries. Let your troubles fall behind you. Don't you wait another minute? Just get up and on your feet and get to dancing, singing, come on, jumping, leaping, get to shouting, make it loud and make it glorious. Start rejoicing. Shout out. Make your praise glorious. Come on, if you 
Come on, is anybody in this place be able to be alive in Christ tonight? Hallelujah. How many have a reason to shout and make a joyful noise here? Hey, come on and see it out tonight. When I think of your goodness and your love, kindness, and I know your grace is giving me life, giving me life. When I see, when your, I favor. see come on. your favor over me, I'm grateful and I know, I know my Savior is giving me life, giving me life, he's giving me life, he's giving me life, abundantly overflowing, overwhelming, more than I can see, you're giving me life. Come on, anybody here can say that tonight. Hallelujah, he's the word of God in this place. Come on and give him some praise. Hey. Come on and say when I think. When I think of your goodness and your love, be kindness. imagine in this place tonight come on how many can testify to the goodness of God come on if that's you say come on and declare tonight living the blessed life now I've got the best life now oh Jesus I'm alive come on and say I've got the best life now come on and declare living the blessed life now I got the best right now. Oh, Jesus, I'm alive. Come on, the best right now. Come on, living the best right now. I got the best right now. Oh, Jesus, I'm alive in you. I got the best right now. you but I'm grateful to be here tonight I'm grateful to serve a faithful God in this place come on now if that's you I want you to declare it tonight come on he's we're living the blessed life come on and sing it out say hey I've got the best life now come on and declare living the best life now say I've got the best life now Whoa. One more time, say, I've got the best life now. Hey, hey. Say, I've got the best life now. Oh, Jesus, I'm alive in you. I've got the best life now. Living the best life. Living the best life.
on, if you're faithful to be alive in Christ tonight, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, if you came here tonight to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, just speak and lift up your hands and open your mouth and praise him in this place. Hallelujah.
sing it out. Here's my worship. Hold on, my worship. Receive my worship. Time, come on. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Come on, let's lift our hands all over this place, church. You can sense God's presence. God's anointing is here. We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. You are. Worship Jesus tonight. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, God. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. For your unconditional love, God. Come on and thank Him tonight for your salvation. Oh, we magnify you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, oh hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we magnify you, Lord. Oh, and I have everything I need. I have everything I need. And I have. your hands and sing it. See, I have everything I need. We have it all in you, Jesus. I have everything. Oh, we searched and we found it all in you, Lord. I have everything I need. Yes, Lord, the great I am.
Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands all over this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands. If you need more of God, let's lift up our hands. If you want more of God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your strength, God. Your strength, God. Hallelujah. We trust in you, God. We trust in you, Jesus. You are my strength, Lord. You are my strength. Yes, yes. The great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your strength, oh God. Your strength, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands. Praise the Lord. What awesome worship. I hope you can feel the presence of God right where you're at right now. Father, we just magnify your name. We worship you this evening. Amen. You know, it's hard to get back into just live stream when there's so much going on, some anointing going on here at church, a live worship. But once again, the reason why we're not having church tonight, just live stream, is we're really actually doing some construction, flooring. We're laying flooring. So there's a lot of work. So we just decided that we would just have on live stream so we connect this way. But tonight we're going to continue to worship the Lord with, of course, our finances. And this is an opportunity that we get to be able to bless God. You know, many times we think, okay, Lord, I come to church so that God can bless me. But, you know, during our worship and during uh, this time, we have an opportunity to bless God. And we bless God by the measure that we give with and the gratitude that we give with tonight. There's so many reasons why we should give. We give because we're grateful. We give because we love God. Because we give because we believe in the principles of God's word. So I'm going to ask you to begin to prepare yourself tonight to give. If it's giving your tithe, those that give tithe during the week, if you've already given your tithe, then give an offering to the Lord. We are right in the middle of our pledges. I think there's still about $10,000 that has come in, and I pray that you stay faithful also with your pledges. And of course, United We Can. There are many of us that are United We Can members, and we have this opportunity to be able to stay faithful in our United Can level that we're at. Amen. So many ways you can give. And you can see it on the screen. You can scan to give. You can go to our website. You can text to give. And you can, you can do all these mediums and platforms to be able to give tonight. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to give. It is a blessing to give. It is a privilege to give. And you know, every time we walk into church, we expect something from God. And I think it's the same way with God. God expects our worship. So we should never put a limit on what we give, even our offerings, coming into a time like this and being able to give tonight. I'm going to say a prayer for you as we give tonight. Let's all participate in giving to the Lord. Has God been good to you? If he has, let's give unto the Lord tonight. Father, I pray that you bless this time. That it be not a time, God, where we, God, not participate, but, Lord God, that we are able to be grateful for the things that you've done within our lives. Every time we walk into this place, every time we're in your presence, God, it's an opportunity for us to be able to give unto you. So I pray that you bless the giver, and, God, that you bless the finances of our ministry, that there will always be more than enough to be able to do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, right now, we're going to have some video announcements, so pay attention to the screen tonight. But I still have things that have not been completed yet, and I can't wait to see God unfold these dreams and visions. To me, being a leader is someone that's called of God to pour out into the next generation. To care for people, to love people. To have integrity, love, and to be selfless. A leader is somebody who is willing to take risks. To take those around you and just lift them up to God. To live as an example for this upcoming generation. To be someone who's willing to put others before themselves. At this retreat that you will not leave the same, but I pray you'll have such a hunger for God that when you go back, that you're gonna revolutionize your church.
When I look at our ministry, I look at the past and how God has taken us from a humble beginning to a network of churches that God has raised up around the world. Every step of the way has been steps of faith. God has promised that you and I are the generation that will dispossess the nations. It is in our DNA to never back down, never surrender, and never give up. God took us out of that ghetto and out of that neighborhood. He lifted us up. And here we are tonight, the largest inner city ministry in the world. Support World Missions and do what you love. My name is Nathan Coy. I'm 34 years old. I'm a product of our Victory Home. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm 29 years old. I'm also a product of the Victory Homes. This year, we're doing what we love. We're going to hike for hope. Well, Run for Hope has impacted our lives because we're on our way to the mission field and we know that these base churches are being financed from all the finances that are being raised all around the world through Run for Hope. Every time I see that money is being raised for Run for Hope and United We Can, I see that souls are attached to those dollars all over the world. This year, we're doing what we love. We're hiking for hope. This year, do what you love. Sign up today by visiting borunforhope.org.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A lot of things going on, and especially what's going on this weekend. We are making history this weekend with everything that's taking place. It's exciting to see, and that's why we're getting the church ready. Our founders are going to be in town. Wow, what an exciting time we're going to have this weekend. I pray that you are anticipating what God's going to do, not only in our church, but in our region, our yes. multi-region. Yes. We're all coming together, family from Texas, from Utah, from New Mexico. And so we're excited about that, right, yes. to see our family. Yes, they're coming from everywhere. Starting on Friday night, we're going to be having Pastor Ryan Kuklinski, who is our a third wave gang overseer and then saturday we're having pastor ryan and also from panama pastor kiki in a, in a training a leadership deployment and then sunday come on somebody right. say amen and then sunday morning we're going to be hearing from kike from panama yes. pastor kike and and what's so exciting is that we're going to have a concert yes. with Pastor Kike all the way from Panama. And he is probably one of the very powerful yes. anointed musicians no, anointed, and yes. singer, and he writes music. And so I know that we're going to have not only just being a time of blessed and being together, but we're going to be having like a good time, yes, right? Yes, praise the Lord. And we want you to invite your loved ones on Sunday, you know, especially those that speak Spanish on Sunday night. Pastor Kiki speaks and uh, sings in Spanish, and it's going to be a great, 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 great time. So we'll see you there. History is being made this week in our Legacy Weekend, yes. so we encourage you to be there. God bless you. Yes. We love you. Now it's time for the Word of God. Yes. Let's get into the Word of God. Amen. God bless you. Psalms chapter 16 and verse number 7. Psalm 16, verse number 7. Does everybody have it? Or you can see on the screen right here. It's, and I pray that if you're at home, that you're standing up for the word and getting ready with the word. Amen. Psalm 16, verse 7, it says, I will bless the Lord. This is David speaking. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my heart, my mind instruct me in the dark. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my heart, my mind instruct me in the dark. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my heart and my mind instruct me in the dark. David is writing here in Psalms 16. And he's writing of his encounter with darkness. That he was experiencing and sensing darkness in his life. Let me just say this. That you as a believer, you're always going to face the darkness trying to come in and disrupt your life. Now when I look at this experience of David, and even the verse that David, uh, verse 7. I look at this more of a strategy of the enemy than I, I feel it was a direct attack of the enemy. There are different attacks, there are different ways the enemy tries to get into our lives, a direct attack, but this is more of a strategy uh, of the enemy than it was a direct attack of the enemy. The enemy was attempting to distract, distract David and intimidate David by attempting to keep him from seeing the direction that he was going, what was in front of him and what was around him. When David speaks his psalm, it's as if someone turned out the lights. How many know when somebody turns off the lights or you go into bed and turn the lights, it's very easy for you to get disoriented because everything is pitch black. It's as if someone turned off the lights so that you can't see what's in front of you and what's around you. The strategy sometimes of the enemy is to lose your sense of direction and the enemy tries to disorient the believer. How many know what I'm talking about? There's times, man, where you just like can't, you can't see what God is doing. You can't see the direction. You can't hear God. Come on, somebody say man. You can't feel God. The strategy of the enemy is to lose our sense of direction and disorient the believer. Yet David said these words. What's in my mind and what's in my heart will instruct me in the dark. In other words, David said, what I have in my heart and what I have in my mind will disarm the power of darkness in my life. Now, the darkness has powers. I remember 
About a year ago, my daughter, Stephanie, asked me to come, me and my wife, to come and pray for her new, she had a, just uh, taken over a condo, and she asked us to, uh, me to come and pray, and me and my wife went, and we had a hard time finding it, because uh, it was a big complex, and, and she lived a, a little ways away from the parking lot, and when we got there, it was pitch dark, and we had to walk around to get her, uh, get to her condo. And I'm telling my wife, I'm looking at my wife, and I'm saying, my God, this is, feels like this is the ghetto, man. I feel like, man, it just felt, it was so dark, I got afraid for her, because even her condo was facing the field, and I, the way I looked at it in the dark, it looked horrible. It looked like it was, you know, it wasn't a good place to live. But then I came back a few months later, came back in the day, and everything, every, it, it was a totally different perspective. There was flowers, and, and, and there was sidewalk, and the field had, it, it just, in the dark, it looked dangerous, but in the day, uh, it looked all right, amen, so I could sleep at night, amen. Because the darkness has power. We're in darkness. Five characteristics of darkness. Let me give you five characteristics of darkness. Number one. Darkness is deceiving and intimidating. And I'm, I'm talking about spiritually. Sometimes when we sense darkness and we can feel you know, the darkness, we can spiritually get overwhelmed. And it can even breed a sense of panic within our lives. And we sense darkness and we sense the intimidation of that darkness. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Number two, another characteristic that darkness magnifies objects into things they are not. How many know you can see a lot of weird things in the dark? Amen. You can see faces. Amen. You can see the Yorona. Amen. Praise the Lord. In the dark. Amen. Because in the darkness, it magnifies into things that are not there or not. We see things that aren't there. And our imagination runs wild. In the dark. And I'm talking spiritually sometimes. Sometimes, man, we live on the edge and we say, oh, my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Because you can sense because it magnifies objects and the things that are not there. Number three, darkness can heighten the intensity of our fear. Darkness breeds fear. It breeds fear. Darkness has power. It is deceiving, intimidating. It magnifies objects into things that they are not. It can heighten the intensity of our fear. Darkness breeds fear. Number four, it clouds our judgment. In darkness, we tend to panic when we don't have direction and we can't see what's in front of us. There's some of us that when we don't see anything, we panic and we make our own way and we go through the wrong doors and make the wrong decisions. Can I hear somebody say amen? But to me, spiritually speaking, to me, the greatest strategy of the enemy when it comes to darkness is, the, is the, that he attempts to darken the paths to truth. This, to me, is the greatest strategy of the enemy, to keep us from seeing and walking in truth. He darkens our path. To me, it is the greatest power of the enemy, the greatest strategy of the enemy when it comes to darkness. And I'm here to tell you that in your Christian walk, there's going to be some dark seasons. There are going to be seasons, man, when darkness is going to come and you're going to sense the enemy. You're going to sense a strategy of the enemy because you have no answers. You don't have, you don't have a direction within your life. And one of the things that the enemy tries to do is he tries to darken the path to truth to keep us and seeing and walking in truth and darken our paths. David is an example to us that we will have experiences and seasons in our walk when we will have to battle darkness and we will have to battle uh, the, the sense of darkness within our lives. Now, when it comes to darkness, Jesus spoke about darkness in John chapter 8, verse number 12, and I'm going to read it for you. He wrote this. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. It seems like he's making a distinction from the world and those believers. But actually, I believe because he uses the word skosha in the Greek. He uses the Greek word for darkness is skosha. And that word means the ignorance of divine things. And he was not just speaking to worldly 
a worldly perspective. He was speaking to believers who walk in the darkness because of their ignorance of divine things. Their ignorance of that. What Jesus was saying was that he has given us the ability to combat darkness by arming us with the only thing that can break darkness. And the only thing that can break darkness is light. So he was speaking here and he was speaking that there are many believers sometimes that cannot combat darkness in their life because they have an ignorance of divine things. They have an ignorance of the light. As it does in the natural, so it is in the spiritual, that light can break darkness. And what he was talking about here is, yes, you're going to have seasons of darkness in your life. The enemy is going to try to create a, a, you know, a, a darkness where you can't see where you're going. But the way that we break that, the way that we combat it, the way that we disarm the power of darkness is through the light of God's word. Somebody say amen. The light of God's word. Scotia, the ignorance of divine things. And there are a lot of believers that walk around with ignorance of divine things, ignorant of the power that we have through the light of his word, that there's power in God's word. There are going to be seasons of darkness in your life when you can't see direction. But I want you to know something. God has given us the power to disarm the power of the darkness. Come on, somebody say amen. And if you're there this evening, if you're in a season of darkness where you can't see where you're going, I tell you what, turn the TV off, turn social media off get into your word and turn on the light of God's word somebody say amen can we give the Lord a good clap off for a moment that's why David wrote the psalm thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path the message says it like this by your words, I can see where I'm going because they throw a beam of light on my dark path. Wow. Let me say it again. I don't always like to use a message because it just kind of gets too loose. But that's pretty good. By your words, I can see where I'm going. They throw a beam of light on my dark path. He wrote in Psalms 1828, David, he says, you cause my lamp to be lighted and to shine. And then he says, the Lord my God illuminates my darkness. Job wrote this in Job 29. When his light shone upon my head and by his light. Listen. By his light I walked through darkness. But this Peter wrote this in 2 Peter 1.19. Listen to this. This is a powerful scripture. So we have the prophetic word made more certain. You do well to pay close attention to it as a lamp shining in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the light breaks through the gloom and the morning star rises in your heart. Peter said you would be, you would do well to pay close attention to the prophetic word. Because it becomes a lamp shining in a dark place. And as the light breaks through, it breaks the gloom that the enemy has tried to put on our lives. Somebody say amen. I want you to know we are living in a prophetic time. We are living where the word has become prophetic. There are prophetic words being spoken. And if I was you, I wouldn't look that way. I wouldn't look that way. I'd get into the light of God's word because that's what's going to sustain us in this time. There's a lot of dark things in this world right now. But thank God for the relevance of God's word. Uh, just shine the word. God has given us the power to... Disarm the power of darkness or the power of the light of his word. So in your life, your life is defined by the presence of divine, divine things, the word of God, versus the ignorance of divine things. When you look at all this, then you understand why the enemy's strategies, his strategies for many lives, is to darken the paths of truth in your life. That God has empowered us with the light of his word to illuminate those paths. He illuminated those paths. And, and this is such a timely word for this hour. Because there's a lot of people that are not into their word. You know, some, there's people that don't even know what they believe. They don't even know what they believe. They don't know what they stand for. You need to get in your word, man. You're getting to get in your word. 
You need to take vetti. You need to get to the flow when we have the flow. Got to get in your word because right now you need to know what you stand for and what you believe. Because if you don't have convictions, then somebody else is going to put their convictions upon your life. David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This is the first scripture I ever memorized. As a young Christian, 18 years old, this is the first one. And it's never gone away. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And then I memorized, uh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. What, what was David saying? Especially in reference to what he, the, the verse that I read. And let me read that again. Because David said, I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. He said, indeed, my heart and my mind instruct me in the dark. That's a, that's a heavy word. He said, my heart and my mind instruct me in the dark. What was David saying? He said, I have been counseled by God. I have been bred in and by his word. Thy word have I hid in my heart so that what's in my heart and my mind will instruct me in the dark. Somebody say amen. I believe like never before, the enemy's trying to bring darkness into the, the lives of his people to cloud their judgment, make them panic, make him see things that aren't there. Come on, somebody say amen. Make him see things. If there's ever a, a year of 20, Timmy, we saw things because we were believing what people said. We saw things. We began to imagine things that never even happened. Come on, somebody say amen. I believe more than ever. But David said this. He said this. My heart and my mind instruct me in the darkness. He said, I've been bred by the word of God so that in the seasons of darkness, I don't panic. I don't hide. The fear doesn't come out of my life. But I put on the light to his word and it lights my path somebody say amen. amen I have been conditioned to turn the light of his word on in dark seasons Whew, somebody say amen you know what I'm enjoying I've enjoyed the last I don't remember when we got the virus but the last two months is sleep I value sleep more now than ever I think that the last two nights I even went to bed at 10 o'clock I know, amen, that's old, amen. I went to bed, I, I did value sleep because there was a time for like 10 days in a row that I couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep. And you know what got me through all those nights where you couldn't sleep? That's frustrating when you can't sleep, man. When you get up and you know, and everybody's sleeping and you're just like with your eyes awake and you count sheep, amen. And then, then you count count ratas, hallelujah, huh? you start counting everything, I, I even said, okay, if I look outside the window, I went into our back bedroom, and I said, if I look outside the window, maybe I'll fall asleep, amen, then I said, oh, maybe I'll call Caesar, and he can preach to me, and I'll fall asleep, amen, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what kept me in those nights was the word of God, I just begin to read the word, I begin to read the word, I can see, hear my, you know, I hear my, you know, I can hear God straight, because it was not just not sleeping, but then fear rises up inside of you. You say, man, what's wrong with me? You start getting ansias. That means you start getting anxious in your spirit. But God's word, somebody said this, the word that you store up in silence will come back to you in the storm. Let me say it again. The word that you store up in silence will come back to you in the storm. He said the same promises of God that excite you will be the same promises that hold you. Oh, somebody say amen. In other words, as you read God's word, it might not be for that moment. As you read in your daily devotions, it might not be for that But there's going to be a moment when the darkness comes. And that word that you read inside of your life is going to rise up inside of you. And you're going to say, I'm going to turn on the light of his word. Somebody say amen. The word that you store up in silence will come back to you in the storm. Now there's a difference here. And I want to concentrate on what David said. There's a difference between here in David's uh, Psalms 119, 105. There's a difference between the, the lamp and the light. He said, thy word, have I, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word, in the, the word lamp in the Hebrew, Hebrew refers more to a candle. It's not a real bright light. That's what they used. They didn't have flashlights. They had candles. It refers more to a candle, and it's just enough light to see the next step. 
God sometimes doesn't give you the whole picture. Sometimes he just gives you the next step. That's why the word lamp is there. Because that candle would give you the next step. A lamp unto my feet. Sometimes God doesn't give you the plan. He gives you the next step. And your job is to make sure you're taking the God step that God wants you to take. And he, God's word illuminates your feet so that you can take the right step. Come on, somebody say amen. Sometimes we want God to give us the whole plan, the picture, our destiny all in once. And God doesn't work that way sometimes. God just says, okay, I'm going to train you in the word because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a lamp unto your feet like a candle. All you can see is the next step. you got to worry about the next step, brother and sister. Not worry about the call of God or the taking the, you know, you have the call of God, but not taking a city. You know, take the next step. I hear people say, I'm going to take a city. I hear you guys come on the home, the gang, third way. I want to take a city. I want to, you know, be lost up. Well, learn how to take the next step first. Learn how to do that. Learn how to take by the word of God. Take. People want to jump and take what's taken me 40 years to learn. You want to learn in two years. You take the next step. That's why he said the word is a lamp. But then he said the word is also a light. In the Hebrew, it's a brighter light. And it's enough light to show the path and direction of illuminating the path. Why God's word is so important because the strategy of the enemy because the enemy wants to darken your next step. There are believers that, don't, that, 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 that uh, they don't know what that next step is in their life. And the, the, the enemy tries to come and darken that next step. Darken your path. Darken the truth. I want you to know something. Life-changing decisions are made in the dark. Let me say it again. Life-changing decisions. You're either going to go in the right direction or you get off the path and you make Dumb choices and bad decisions in your life. He used the word light to light the path. It's very important you understand that, to illuminate that path. There are three, there are three uh, um, distinctions when God's word is a light into our path. The power of God's word is a light into our path. Number one, it makes our direction clear. When God's word lights our path, it makes our direction clear. It points the direction clearly. We are able to see a clear path, clear direction for our lives and for our decision and takes the confusion away from our life. The word of God is a light unto my path. Path. And what it does, it illuminates it clearly and points the direction clearly. Sometimes we're looking for counsel from everybody. We want everybody to tell us which way to go. Brother, get into your word and it will light up your path and you will have a clear direction of where you're supposed to go. We say amen. Clear direction. That's simple, man. This is so simple. We want to complicate it's God's word in your life. It's God's word in your life that will clearly point the direction in your life. Someone said this, and 95% of the word of God, because everybody's always saying, what is the will for my life? What is the will for my life? Well, the will right now until God gives you a specific will is to get into that word and to live that word and to grow in that word. 95% of the will of God is to get into his word and follow so that he can give you clear direction in your word. You don't have to ask something, uh, somebody if for advice, for direction, if it's not in God's word. Say that. Huh? Well, should I marry that person? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why you ask me? Get into your word. Clear direction. Clear, clear path. Clear direction for our lives, for our decision. It takes the confusion away. Number two, the lamp of God's word is not only clear, but is also clarifying. It brings clarity to our lives. It's heavy, man. The, that, 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 as we illuminate the, you know, the darkness with the lamp of God's word, it makes our direction clear. And then it brings clarity to our lives. Not only do we see the path clearly, but it also brings clarity to the things around us, the distractions. 
It, not, it doesn't just enlighten the way we should go, but it enlightens the way that we should walk. In other words, it brings clarity to things. It just doesn't make a clear path, a direction that we should go, but it begins to bring clarity to things. Listen, it exposes the wrong ways. It exposes the dangerous path. It brings clarity to our life. When you're confused, get into your word because it will bring clarity to your life. You don't have to ask somebody, is this right or this wrong? God's word will bring clarity to everything in your life. It not only illuminates the path, but all of a sudden, the things that try to distract your life, it brings clarity. You don't have to have your leader tell you, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. You can see it for yourself, man. I love that. I love when people, you know, I love it when people make decisions by the, on, the, on their own. I can see that. I don't know, brother, come here. Come here. Brother, come here. Let me slap you on the head. That's what, what are you doing? Well, I didn't know it was wrong, Pastor. You don't know it's wrong because you're not in your word. When you get in your word, it brings clarity. You see for yourself. That's heavy, man. That's heavy. We want, we want, we want to, you know, we want God to just give us a word. He is giving you a word. I need a word from God. Get in your word. And it will speak clarity to your life. That's what precepts are. Okay, precepts. Precepts. The Bible is full of precepts. These are precepts. Huh? They're, like, they're like signs, highway signs. A precept is something like slow down or speed limit 65 or wear seat belts or no distracted driving. Now, those are precepts, okay? But after a while, okay, and, and, you know, at first, if you have a, you know, you have a heavy, heavy foot, you like to drive fast, you know? Let me just tell you something. Jesus gets off at 75. So I'm a very careful driver, although I've been driving faster, right? My wife says, you sure drive faster because I'm a very careful driver. Those are precepts. And, and sometimes, you know, even you third waivers, even though I know, God, I see somebody in front of me, and they're, they're you know, coming to church on I-25, I it's an adventure. It really is. It's an adventure because you have to get over all the way to the side because there, there's so much traffic. Those of you that come from, from and there's times that they're, 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 uh, uh, there's somebody that's, We've been back and forth, and I'll be careful, and I'll pass them. And sure enough, here, here they are. They're looking at their phone. And most of the times, it's a woman. I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> most of the times, or the light turns green, and they sit there. Why? Because they're looking at their phone. Come on. Somebody said, and most of the time, that's a man. Hallelujah. Well, all those things, all those things keep us, you know, they keep us safe. They they, they are precepts, slow down, speed limit, wear seat belts, no distracted driving, wear seat belts. There's still people today that don't know wear seat belts. You must not love your life or love your family's life either. I started wearing seat belts in, right after this guy from the Kansas City Chiefs, Derek Thomas. He had his whole life in front of him, and he was driving in Kansas City going 25 miles an hour, not wearing a seatbelt. He got in a wreck and he got killed. And I said, that's enough. I always wear my seatbelt. I don't understand people that don't wear seatbelts. There's a big old sign, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up. And even now they put it in these neon signs, buckle up, idiot, buckle up, idiot, buckle up. Those are all precepts. Slow down, curve, curve, slow down. Those are precepts. But we still, some people still can't do it. Well, there's no cops. Amen, huh? There's no cops. Sooner or later, the precepts have to become principles. They have to become principles in our life. They are precepts at the beginning, but after a while, they have to become principles within our life. You don't drive fast and crazy because the sign says it. You drive, 
you drive responsible because it's responsible within your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God's word teaches that. There are precepts at first that we can't understand, that we don't understand. Then that's why we have all these questions. Can I drink and can I dance and can I date and word? Get into your word and God will begin to teach you those precepts. And if you will obey those precepts, after a while they become principles in your life. Nobody has to follow you around. Come on, somebody say amen. Nobody has to follow you around with a GPS scene if you're going to mess up because it's inside of your heart. You're not doing it just because you don't get a ticket. You're doing it now because it's a principle in God's word because you have clarity in your life. Somebody say amen. Huh? Even giving. Huh? You ain't got to give because I'm a leader. Well, that's your attitude. You shouldn't be a leader. It's a precept. But after you start seeing God bless your finances, it goes from a precept to a principle in your life. You have clarity. Okay. Okay. A lot of times what I'm speaking, you're not going to understand if you're new. If you're already old in the Lord and you still can't, something wrong with you, man. <laughs> something wrong with you. I don't know if you're ever going to get it. People that have been saved five, ten years and still don't understand, can't get tidy. Ain't something wrong with you. You probably ain't never going to get it and you're never going to be blessed. Somebody say amen. But it's a precept. I got to follow the precept. I don't always like it. But God knows that light. And after a while, that precept becomes a principle in my life. Whoa, somebody say amen. We sit here saying, why can't I do this? Or well, I don't understand why, why this is wrong. It's for God. Uh, anymore, it's across the board. There's so many different levels of conviction. Well, I want to tell you something. The word of God never changes, brother. What was a conviction in God's word is a conviction for 2020. Come on, it's 2021. Can I hear somebody say amen? But it's clarity. I get into God's word, and all of a sudden, I, it becomes a light into my path. I don't want to. I want to go that way. I want to follow God's path. I don't want to go that path. I don't want to go, and I don't want to go backwards anymore. Amen. I don't want to go where I came from. I want to go somewhere. God didn't save me so I could go backwards. God saved me so I could follow His path. Somebody say amen. God always lays a pathway in your life. You know. Sooner or later, brother and sister, you, you can't just do things because people tell you to do them. You got to do them because there's clarity that's brought to your life because of God's word. It's clear. It clarifies. There's a clarity. Huh? The third thing is that path, the word of God also has the power to contend, contend for our lives. Let me explain myself. Is that this, what David was talking about, the, that the word is a, li a light into my path. It means that God brings his word, shows me clearly and brings clarity in my life. But it also contends when I stay on that path and I allow God's word to illuminate my path, it contends for my life. What does that mean? It keeps me safe. You know the safest place that you can be as a believer is on God's pathway. Come on, somebody say, as long as you stay on the path, God will defend you and God will protect you. So when you look at the light that illuminates our pathway, God's word is more than just, and you know, I'm going to tell you this as I come to the piano. We have no excuse in this day and age. There are so many Bible plans. Come on, somebody say, I mean, you know, we're living in a Bible-rich Bible society. I mean, you, you go to some of these plans and you just begin to hear God. How many has God spoken to your life more than ever, maybe in the last year or so, the, the words... I, I keep a, I keep a, uh, I have a place on my iPad where I just take quotes and scriptures that take, take, uh, um, stand out to me. That just, man, just, wow, that spoke to me for that day. Like, I, I, that, that word that just tore up in silence comes back to the storm. I wrote that a couple years back. But man, God's word, we have no excuse to get up in the morning and to be able to 
get into God's word and get into a Bible plan. To read the Bible in a year. To get those things and let God speak to you. It's, it's enriching. The only hard time is when you're like in Leviticus. And then you go through all the ones where he, he begat him, begat, begat her, begat her. Born, and they do it through a whole, the fa- whole family tree. You're like, oh, God, help us. I go, God, how could this really enrich my life? He says, shut up and read. Huh? I've been getting hungry for God's word. Hungry. Because we're living in an era now. God speaking words to our life. Clear direction. Clarity to certain things within our lives. And he contends. The word of God contends for my life. Keeps me safe. I might, not, I might feel the, the pressure. I might feel the weather, the storm. But as long as I'm on that path, I'm all right. That's what David was talking about. David was saying, what's in my mind, what's in my heart, will instruct me in the dark. Hallelujah. What's in your life? What's in your heart today? Are you getting into God's word? Maybe you're going through a dark season in your life. I tell you this, turn on the light of your word. It's in you. It's in you. We are bred We are bred to turn the light on, darkness. I want divine things in my life. I don't want to be ignorant of divine things. God's word is divine. It is divine. It is powerful. Come on, somebody say amen. It cuts. It directs. Come on, somebody say amen. It directs my life. When I get impatient, it calms me down. It doesn't shake. Everything around us shakes. God's word don't shake. My heart and my mind instruct me in the dark. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to lift your hands right now.
it this week, but oh, look at me for a second. One of the biggest lies of the devil is to make us think that our life is divided, that we have a spiritual side and we have a secular side. And that's the biggest lie of the devil. And some of us think, okay, I'll, I'll read God's word at church, but the rest of the week is mine. Listen to what it says. There are no spiritual versus non-spiritual components in your life. There is no distinction. There is no secular division of your life. We are spiritual beings. Therefore, everything we are involved in has a spiritual overtone. God sees us holistically. In other words, there's not a, a work you. There's not a family you. There is a spiritual you. And God, that's, that's why... God's word, you know. I could tell. I, I be honest, for 40 years I could tell who gets into their word by the way you respond to God's word here. There's people that are hungry, there's people that you're never into your word. You don't take that time, you don't even pray. I expect God to minister and keep you on the right path to quit making. There's some of you here that have made decision, bad decision after bad decision after bad because you have no direction or path in your life. But this year, My God. God is going to bring clear direction to our yes, lives. Lord. God is going to clarify things within our life. We've got to be hungry for God's word. And I believe this more than ever. Maybe it's just me, but I know it's some of you. God's speaking words in this hour. He's speaking words, not just from here. It's in your word. David said, your word is like gold to me. Let's be challenged. Be challenged because it's that in the word that God teaches us to light our path because the divine perceptions and perspectives Alive. I want you to lift your hands. Hallelujah. God, teach me your word. Hallelujah. Oh, here I am. an altar call, but I'm going to say this. The devil is attacking God's people like never before. And here's the question. What are you defending yourself with? What are you defending yourself with? It's time to get out the sword of God's word. Arm me, Lord. Come on. Say that with me. Arm me, Lord. Arm me with your word. Arm me with your... Listen, if you're struggling, you're watching, you're struggling, you're here, you're struggling in God's word, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. Take that step of declaration. Say, this is the year that I'm going to begin to set my direction through your word. I need to have that clear direction and that clarity. I want you to come right now. Come on, stand and say, I want God's word to be alive. In so my heart. here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am.
you look at me for a second. I'm going to say a prayer. Look at me for a second. If there's anything I've learned in the last year, looking at Facebook and Instagram, is how ignorant some people are in God's word. If this is a season where you better know your word, or you could start believing in things that defy God's word. People are standing for abortion. They're standing for gender change. That's defiance of God's word. And if you don't know God's word, then it's not a platform of your life. Then you, there you are on Facebook applauding those things. You better know your word. You better be shaped and founded in your word. If you have no convictions, somebody else is going to define your convictions. It's not who you're voting for. It's not what party you're in. You are a child of the living God. You have a responsibility of God's word. I just look at people and I say, my goodness. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? And I don't, I don't apologize for it. I will not apologize for God's word. You better know what you believe. And especially you better know what you believe before you start posting it. You better know what you believe. You better know what you stand for. And you better stand up for God's word. Stand up for God's word. Huh? Better know your convictions. Come on, somebody say amen. I've never seen such ignorance in my life I don't comment I just delete <laughs> hallelujah I will somebody comes against God's word and posting things that are defiant against God's word you don't need to be my friend I'm sorry bam I stand on God's word there is no black or there's no gray there's a line you're either here that comes in God's word. Nobody should have to tell you that. But if you don't read God's word, if God's word is not a foundation, then that's why you have all these, you know, opinions of what you think is right and wrong. God's word is not an opinion. It is an absolute. It is the absolute word of God. In Ten years, some of the people that you are running our country are going to be gone. But God's word will still be right here. It'll still be standing. I stand on God's word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God, give us a hunger for your word. Lift your hands. Give us a hunger for your word. A hunger for your word, God. Hallelujah. It's not what I learned yesterday. It's what you're speaking to me today, God. Speak a new word, God. Speak a prophetic word to my life. Speak a prophetic word for my family. Speak a prophetic word for my weaknesses, God. Speak a prophetic word for your call. We get hungry for God. We want to be hungry for your word.
Thank you, Jesus. I got a sense of presence of God here. Just sense God's presence. God's speaking to us, man. Speaking to us. Arm yourself. Arm yourself. Arm. Don't just have the appearance. People have the appearance of convictions so that they can look good. But you need to arm yourself with convictions that are going to keep you in trying times. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for his word. Thank you for his word. Somebody say amen. Thank you. Thank you for his word. Come on, give God a good clap offering. Hallelujah. What a powerful word for that is relevant to our time right now, disarming the darkness. I pray you let the word of God speak to your life. Well, what a great night we've had. And we pray again that we see you this weekend. It's going to be a powerful time. We pray a hedge of protection over you. And I do want to make this announcement. Five o'clock in the morning, we are praying on Zoom, amen, and this is, tomorrow's going to be our eighth day that we've been praying, and I feel like we are praying, we are, we are making, we are breeding miracles in our prayers, so if you need a miracle, I pray that you join us at 5 a.m. in the morning uh, on our Zoom, amen. Listen, we love you, God bless you, be safe, in Jesus' name, amen.